hi everyone in this video i will be designing a portfolio website using html and all css so let's see what we have in this project so on the left side we have a sidebar and then we have this main section so in the sidebar we have an image and uh, links okay so now we are in this main section so as you can see this home link is active and uh, then we have this main section in which we have a title a uh, subtitle and call to action buttons so if i click on the services so it goes to the services section and we have these different services and then we have this portfolio items and as you can see when i hover you can see this hover effect and uh, then we have this review section okay and after that we have the blog section and after the blog we have the contacted section okay so if i uh, resize the browser window so as you can see it is looking like this and the sidebar disappears and if i click on this hamburger menu so as you can see the sidebar appears and if i click again so it disappears so this is a completely responsive so i will not gonna be using any framework like bootstrap or other frameworks so i will be using only html and uh, css and some little bit javascript for this kind of interaction so without further ado let's dive into the video okay so i have opened the starter template uh, using vs code so in the starter template we have a link to the line awesome icons and animate on scroll library and then we have this custom style.css file and uh, here we have a javascript file for uh, the animate on scroll library and then we have this custom app.js file all right so i'm gonna open this style.css file in which we have these variables and uh, the font that i have uh, included from the google fonts okay so i'm gonna start with the reset all right so inside this uh index.html so i'm gonna put some text inside this uh navigation so this will be some text okay and i'm gonna reset these text and uh, let me put an anchor tag this will be link all right so that's it for now and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna right click on this and i'm gonna open with the live server so i have already installed this plugin so you can install this plugin by and search for a live server all right so i'm gonna open this with a live server okay so i'm gonna open this style.css file i'm gonna select the universal selector and then i'm going to select pseudo element after and before and then i'm going to reset uh, the padding so by default we have some padding so i have removed that padding and also the margin so i'm going to remove the margin all right and i'm going to set the box sizing to border box all right then i'm going to select the html okay so i will be using the rem if user uh, let's say increase the, the the browser font size so it will gonna scale up so if you have used a pixel so pixel is a fixed unit so the website is will not gonna scale up so that's why i uh, i have used rim so the default font size is 16 pixel so let's say if i want to give an element let's say 23 pixel so how to convert this 23 pixel to a rim so what you can do you can divide 23 divide by 16 so the default font size 16 pixel so whatever the value comes that will be in the rim so this calculation is a bit uh, difficult so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna set the font size to uh, 10 pixel so now calculation will be easy so for example we have uh, 23 pixel to convert this 23 to a rim so it's going to be 23 divided by 10 it's going to be 2.3 rim okay so the calculation is now very simple but here is the problem so like i said the pixel uh, unit is a fixed unit so the website will not gonna scale up or scale down let's say a user 
change the browser uh, default font size okay so I'm, what I'm going to do I'm going to type 62.5 percent which technically equal to 10 pixel so now let's fix that uh, scaling up or scaling down issue and uh, the next thing that I'm going to do I'm going to set the scrolling behavior to smooth all right so that's it for the html and uh, so let's see so as you can see the font size is looking very small because i have set the font size to 10 pixel and then i'm going to select the body okay i'm going to set uh change the font size to 1.6 rem which equals to 16 pixel so as you can see the uh now it's looking fine and I'm going to change the background color. So the background color is going to be color BG. So these are the variable that I already have included. So this is the color. Okay, and I'm going to change the text color. Text color is going to be color body. All right. And uh, so I'm going to give a line height. I'm going to give a line height 1.5 all right and i'm going to change the font family to font base if this font is not available then the font will be sensitive all right and that's it for the body and then i'm going to select the headings up to heading 6 I'm going to give a margin bottom 0.8 rim which is which equals to add pixel all right and i'm going to give a line height 1.2 all right and i'm going to change the color to color heading okay then i'm going to select the anchor tag okay I'm going to remove the text decoration none all right and i'm going to change the color to this brand color all right and uh, i'm going to give a transition 0 0.4 second is all right and on hover the color will be brand to color save it so as you can see okay so then i'm going to select uh i'm going to select the image tag all right i'm going to give a maximum width 100 percent and uh, i'm going to set the display to inline block all right so it will gonna be responsive and I'm going to set the width to 100% as well. Okay, so all the images will be responsive. Okay, so what else we need to do? Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this heading one. So I'm going to give a class heading one. So this will be heading one. Heading two, heading three. All right, so I'm going to go back to the style.css file and I'm going to set uh, transform to uppercase. So all the heading text will be uppercase. Okay, so then I'm going to select the heading one heading one class okay so i want the text to be responsive as well so for that i'm going to use a clamp function so i'm going to set the font size to clamp all right so this function accepts three parameters so the first one will be the minimum value so the minimum value uh, is going to be 4.4 m okay or uh, let's let me set the yeah, 4.4 rem will be enough and this is going to be the prefer value so i'm going to set the prefer value to be 6 viewport width so this value is going to be increase 
increasing or decreasing based on your work we've worked with and this is the last one is going to be the maximum value so the maximum value i'm going to put 6.4 all right so this is the heading so if i resize the browser window so as you can see the font size is increasing and if i decrease the browser window so as you can see the font size is decreasing all right so that's it for the heading one and i'm going to copy this I'm going to paste it and I'm going to paste this one more time. So this is going to be heading two. The minimum font size is going to be 2.4M. Uh, uh, let me set this to 2.6. It's going to be four viewport width and the maximum value is going to be 3. Point, uh, let's say 3.4 or 3.6. So this is going to be heading two. And the last one is going to be heading three. So I'm not going to be using this claim function. So simply I'm going to type font size 1.8 rem. All right. So I don't want this to be responsive. So it's a very small font size. Okay. So that's it for the headings. And so I think that's it for the reset. And uh, now I'm going to design the sidebar. So I'm going to remove all these. Okay, so inside the sidebar, sorry, the, this nav, I'm going to give an ID. So this will be sidebar. Okay, so inside the sidebar, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to put a div and I'm going to give it a class person. Inside this person, I'm going to put an image. And the image is going to be person.jpg. Okay. And then I'm going to put uh, heading 4. And I'm going to give a class heading, let's say, heading 3. And the text will be, the text will be John Carter. All right. And uh, after that, I'm going to put an unorder list. So inside this unorder list, I'm going to put an list item and then an anchor tag. Text will be home and it will go to the home section. So I'm going to duplicate this. And this will go to the services. And this one will go to portfolio section. This will go to the reviews or testimonial blog. And I'm going to duplicate this one more time. And the last one will be blog. Sorry, the last one will be contact so it's going to be contact and the text will be contact and here i'm gonna create another div and i'm gonna give a class burger and here i'm gonna put a div and inside this div i'm gonna create a two span tag all right so let's uh design this sidebar so i'm gonna add a comment here so this will be sidebar i'm gonna select the sidebar id okay i'm gonna give a minimum height 100 report okay and uh, then i'm gonna give a width let's say 200 40 pixels so in the rim so we are going to use rim so i'm going to give 24 rim which equals to 240 pixel all right and uh, what else so i'm going to give a position fixed so i want this to be fixed when a user scroll user scroll down or top so as you can see in the finished project we have this sidebar fixed i'm going to do that 
and from the top is going to be 0 and uh, from the left is going to be 0 all right and i'm going to give a background i'm going to put a linear gradient so the first con color is going to be blue and the last one is going to be sorry first one red and the last one blue and then i'm going to put an image so i'm going to put an overlay the top of the sidebar and the image is going to be sidebar dot sidebar one jpg and then save it all right so instead of using this uh, these two colors so i'm gonna i'll be using this color sidebar color okay so for that i'm gonna select this thread so i have to remove that then i'm gonna select hsla and uh, here I'm going to put a variable that I already have created. It's going to be sidebar color. Okay, then I'm going to put the then I'm going to reduce the opacity to 0 0.9. And I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to remove this blue color and I'm going to paste it. Save it. Oh, oh so didn't work so this should be h s l a save it so as you can see we have this background image and at the top we have this overlay all right so what else i need to do so i'm going to set the background position to center all right and uh, background to background size to cover so it will gonna cover the available space all right and i want this content to be in the center of this sidebar so for that i'm gonna set the display to grid all right and i'm gonna set the align items to center i think align content center so it will center the content okay and i want the text to be in this center as well so text align center all right so i'm going to select the sidebar person okay i'm going to give a margin bottom let's say 2.4m okay also i'm going to give a padding to the sidebar so i'm going to go padding 2.4m which equals 224 pixel all right so i have to remove these bullet points so for that i'm gonna scroll down there and i'm gonna select the on order list list style to none all right and i'm gonna remove the padding from this as well padding zero all right then i'm gonna select the image which is inside this person i class is right here so as you can see we have this this person class and we in which we have this image i have selected that image and i'm going to give a border radius so i'm going to give a border radius lg so this is the variable that i have created so for the border radius lg variable this is 2.4 ring and for the border radius 1.2 ring right so let's see so we have this radius border radius and also i'm gonna give a i'm gonna give a width to let's say one 12 rim this is a small so i'm gonna give a 16 rim uh 17. 17 is looking fine and i'm gonna give a box shadow from the x and y axis is zero blur is going to be zero and the spread in spread is going to be four pixel so using four is going to be 0 0.4 rim and the color is going to be this brand color save it as you can see we have this shadow effect and also i'm going to give some space between the image and the text so i have selected this image i'm going to give a margin bottom 
say 1.2 which equals to 12 pixel looking great then I'm going to select a sidebar on order list okay I'm going to set the text transform to uppercase all right and uh, I'm going to set the display to grid all right and I'm going to give a gap it's going to let's say uh, 1.2 which equals to 12 pixel so the space between these item is uh, 1.2 then I'm going to select the sidebar on order list list item I'm going to select the anchor tag and I'm going to set the color to color heading all right so I'm gonna copy this and on hover color is going to be the brand color all right looking great and uh, I'm gonna select this anchor tag and I'm gonna give a font weight uh, let's say 500 all right looking good so that's it for the sidebar and also i want this to be active so i'm gonna add, add a class is active i'm gonna select this and add this class is active all right so as you can see this is now active and let's design this uh, this burger menu all right so i'm going to select this burger class so i'm going to copy and here i'm going to paste it okay so i'm going to give a width and height so let's me give it a 6.4 rim height 6.4 rim as well and i'm going to give a background color brand color all right and i'm gonna give a border radius say 10 rim so i want this to be rounded and uh, also let's select the sidebar and i'm gonna give a z index 999 so it will be on the top okay and let's select this burger and i'm gonna give a position fixed as well from the right is going to be 2.4 rim and uh, from the top is going to be 2.4 rim as well so save it so as you can see and then I'm gonna give another property which is going to be cursor pointer as you can see when I hover so we have this pointer and then I'm gonna select the burger then I'm going to select this span okay I'm going to give a width uh, for rim and uh, height uh, 0 0.4 rim and I'm going to set the display to block all right and I'm going to give a background color it's going to be BG and I'm going to give a margin so from the left and right is going to be auto from the top and bottom is going to be 1.2 rim all right okay so okay good so i want this uh these lines to be in the center so for that i'm going to select the burger and I'm going to set the display to grid align content center so as you can see this is now in the center so this should be 1.2 rim and this is going to be auto so as you can see this is now in the center 
so from the top and bottom 1.2 and from the left and right is going to be auto all right so i'm going to select this burger all right so I'm going to select the burger and on hover so before doing that let me give it a transition 0.4 second is all right so then i'm going to select the burger on hover so i'm going to select span i'm going to select the first child first one okay i'm going to type transform from the y axis is going to be 0 0.8 trim and then i'm going to type rotate negative 45 degree okay so let's see and uh, for the second child i'm going to copy this and i select the second one so this is going to be negative this is going to be 45 degree wow looking great so instead of uh, this on hover so i want to be this active i want this to be activated when a user click on this just like we have here okay so I'm going to remove this hover state and I'm going to add a class to this. I have selected control D and I'm going to add a class is, is active. Save it. And uh, the color is going to be color BG2. Yeah, color BG2. Save it. All right. So let's add this uh, interaction. So I'm going to go to the JS file. So here I'm going to create a variable. So this variable is going to be the name is going to be hamburger. So it is going to be burger. And I'm going to select that class. Theory selector. So I'm going to select this class. Okay, then I'm going to select uh, sidebar. It's going to be sidebar. All right. So let's see. Let's add a click event to the burger. And let's create an error function. So let's see if this is working. I'm going to click so as you can see we have this click event and which is looking fine so when i click on this uh this burger so i want this to be hidden okay so here's the thing so on desktop i'm going to hide this uh this burger and when i resize the browser window so as you can see in the finished project we don't have that hamburger and when i resize the window so it will be it will be appear so for that what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna hide this for now display none okay so it is now hidden but when i decrease the browser width so it will going to be shown so for that i'm gonna add a media query media screen and i'm gonna give a maximum width say 992 pixel so when the browser width is equal to 992 or smaller then i'm gonna show the burger so i'm gonna type burger i'm gonna set the display to grid so as you can see it's now appearing all right and also if i resize the browser window so this should be disappear so as you can see it's like we have here so for that what i'm gonna do i'm gonna give a transition to this 
sidebar as well so i'm gonna give all 0 0.4 second ease okay so i'm gonna scroll down and here i'm gonna select sidebar and from the left i'm gonna give so the width is uh the sidebar width is let's see uh 24 rem. so i'm gonna give from the left negative 24 rem. so as you can see when i resize the browser width so as you can see sidebar disappears and this is appearing so if i click on this sidebar should appears okay and for that i'm gonna add a class to this sidebar which is going to be is active so from the left is going to be zero okay so yeah this is the one so let's uh do that functionality through javascript so when click on this hamburger so i'm gonna select sidebar i'm gonna class list so i'm gonna toggle this class which is is active save it if i click on this so as you can see we have this functionality and also if i click on this so this should be active burger so i'm gonna select burger class list toggle and the class list the class is going to be is active save it so as you can see looking great and also let's say if user click on this any any of these links so this should be disappears and it goes to that section just like we have in this finish project okay and it goes back to its uh, initial state all right so for that i'm going to create a variable and i'm going to name this variable links i'm going to select document dot query selector all okay so i'm going to select this list item okay then we'll select the links that i have selected i'm gonna look through each of the link i'm gonna add a event listener and this is going to be click and let's add a callback function okay so let me just see if this is working so i'm gonna type collect So as you can see it's working so as you can see we have this active class on this home button so let's say if i click on the services so i'm going to remove the active class from this previous link and i'm going to add the uh, the active class to this services okay so for that i'm going to look through for each oops for each link i'm going to remove the class which is is active i'm going to save it oops so let's see okay, so this is should be links save it so as you can see when i refresh the page so as you can see we have this active class so if i click on any of the other link so the active class is removed from the previous one and then i'm going to add the active class to the one that is recently clicked so for that i'm going to select the link i'm going to add a class is active save it so let's see so as you can see i have clicked on the services so this is now active so if i click on the reviews so as you can see this one is active and uh, also if i uh, click on the service so this uh, sidebar should be disappeared and uh, this should goes to its initial state 
so for that I'm gonna select sidebar and then I'm gonna remove the uh, I'm gonna remove the class list I'm gonna remove the class class list to remove okay so what class I'm gonna remove is active save it or oh, let's see if I click services sidebar disappears and also this should goes to its initial state so I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna select the burger save it and let's see looking great okay so I'm gonna visit to this main section and I'm gonna give this an ID so the ID will be content wrapper so I'm gonna copy this and go to style.css and uh, I'm going to add a comment it's going to be main I'm going to put that and I'm going to give padding left from the left side is going to be 24 rim I guess so yep 24 rim and let me put some text so that you guys can see so I'm going to type some content so as you can see the content is now showing all right and uh, when the screen size is smaller than 992 pixel then i'm going to remove this padding from this main content so i'm going to put that and uh, padding left is going to be zero all right so let me reduce the browser window so as we can see we don't have that padding when i resize the window so as you can see all right so i'm going to remove this and i'm going to create a section and i'm going to give this an id it's going to be home inside this section i'm going to create a container inside the container i'm going to put h1 and i'm going to give a class heading one okay and let me copy the text from the finished project so here i'm going to put the text and i'm going to copy the description copied and I'm gonna paste it right here and then I'm gonna add a div I'm gonna call it CTS so I'm gonna put simply call CTA and here I'm gonna put a button I'm gonna give a class button and the text is going to be explore my work and then I'm gonna put another div so this will be social links and I'm gonna put an icon so I have used line awesome icon so I'm gonna search for line awesome yes okay, so I'm gonna click on this first link and I'm gonna search for so we have Facebook Twitter so I'm gonna search for I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it I'm gonna copy this link all right and i'm gonna so this should be instagram and let me put another one so it's going to be dribble and whatsapp save it and let's see all right so let's design this so i'm gonna scroll to the top and here i'm gonna select section and i'm gonna add a class full height Okay, so when a section has a class full height i'm gonna give a minimum height 100 vh all right <clears throat> and um, i want the text and all the content to be in the center so i'm going to set the display to grid and align content center all right so let's add this class which is full height save it and let's see well, as you can see it is now covering the full default height and the text is in the center and um, what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna select the paragraph text I'm gonna give a margin bottom 1.6 rim which is 16 pixel all right great so then I'm going to select the button button class I'm going to give a padding top and bottom 14 pixel left and right 24 pixel 
and uh, I'm gonna give a background color background color is going to be color brand and the text color is going to be bg2 color save it as you can see and uh, text will be uppercase let's give a font weight 500 all right looking great and i'm going to give a border radius it's going to be border radius all right then I'm gonna select social links. Okay, I'm gonna set the display to flex. All right, and I'm gonna give a gap between these best item. So let me give it a zero point eight trim. All right, and um, then I'm gonna select this, and I'm gonna select the anchor tag. I'm gonna give a width and height, so let me give it a 4.4 rim height 4.4 rim display to grid and align content center. I'm gonna give a background color BG2 and the color is going to be color body. Save it as you can see and i want this to be in the center so i'm going to give a text align center and i'm going to give a border radius 10 rim i want this to be rounded and i'm going to increase the font size so let's say 2.4 rim yep 2.4 is in fine and on hover i'm gonna change the background color so i'm gonna select the social links on hover i'm going to change the background color it's going to be the brand color and the text color is going to be bg2 save it and let's see awesome so as you can see in the finished project these are uh, displaying horizontally and they have some space between the button and the social icon so i'm going to do i'm going to scroll down here I'm gonna type home. I'm gonna select home, then I'm gonna select CTA. I'm gonna set the display to flex so it will display this horizontally. And uh, I want this to be vertically in the center. Okay, so this is now in the center, and I'm gonna give some gap. All right, so here's the problem with the button. So let me fix that. btn on hover and change the background color to brand 2 change the text to bg2 save it and also i'm gonna give a border uh let's say two pixel solid uh so let me give a transparent so i want the border to be transparent all right so looking great now so then I'm going to scroll down to the CTA and I'm going to give a gap, let's say 1.6 rim, which is 16 pixel. Yep, looking good. And when there is not enough space, so if there is not available space, then these social links will go to the next line. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to type clicks wrap to wrap. All right good okay so as you can see the, the text is very close to the sidebar so in the finished project we have some gap so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna scroll to the top so here i'm gonna create here i'm gonna create a container class all right i'm gonna give a maximum width let's say 1140 which is uh and I'm gonna give a um I'm gonna go padding lift. So from the top and bottom is going to be zero and the left and right is going to be let's say 4.4 rim. 
So as you can see, we have some space and when I resize the window, so as you can see, it's looking good, but I'm going to reduce the space between when I when the browser window is smaller like uh, this. So yeah, here it is. So I'm going to create, I'm going to copy this, go back to the container class. I'm going to paste it when the browser window is let's say smaller than 768 pixel select the container set the padding top and bottom zero left and right is going to be 2.4 is this is working or not I think it is not working it's, oops so this should be 768 pixel all right going to be 2.4 all right great so i'm going to select the heading text okay and i'm going to add a break line so okay so this move to the next line and i'm going to change the color for this one so i'm going to wrap this inside a span and I'm going to add a class text brand save it and here I'm going to create a class which will be text brand and I'm going to change the color the brand color save it and refresh as you can see looking great and also as you can see this paragraph is covering like the whole space so I don't want that so I'm gonna scroll to the bottom. I'm gonna select home. I'm gonna select the paragraph, and I'm gonna give a maximum width. Let's say uh, 600 pixel. Okay, 600 pixel is looking fine. So I'm gonna remove this 600. I'm gonna give a 60, which equals to 600 pixel. And also, uh, I'm gonna give some space from the top and bottom so margin top let's say 2.4 and margin bottom let's say 3.4 i'm going to reduce from the top a little bit so let's say 1.8 yep looking good okay so let's move to the next section which is services section So here I'm going to create a section. I'm going to give a class full height, and I'm going to give an ID. It's going to be services. Here I'm going to create a container class, and here I'm going to put intro. I'm going to put H6, and I'm going to give a class adding let's say adding three and uh, the text is going to be yes text and i'm going to select uh adding two and i'm going to give a class adding two and the text is going to be what i do all right and then i'm going to create a div i'm going to give a class edit then i'm gonna add another class this is going to be three column grid save it and here i'm gonna create a class card okay and here i'm gonna put an icon okay so i'm gonna go to the line awesome i'm gonna search for tool or ruler i'm gonna copy this icon I'm gonna paste it then i'm gonna put a heading so i'm gonna type h4 i'm gonna give a class heading 3 and the text is going to be service heading save it and i'm gonna put some lorem text so i'm gonna lorem 16 save it 
all right and i'm gonna add another class so this is going to be cart padding all right okay so let's uh design this so i'm gonna go back to style.css and i'm gonna type intro i'm gonna select the intro class i'm gonna give a margin bottom say to uh, 3.2 rim And let me increase the heading to good size. So it's going to be 3.2 rim minimum. And the maximum is going to be 4.4 rim. All right, looking good. And also I'm gonna uh, add a divider between the section. So I'm gonna go back to the section. with a full height I'm gonna give a border bottom two pixel solid RGBA so the color is going to be white and I'm going to reduce the opacity to 0 0.2 so as you can see we have this divider and also I'm gonna give uh, this text brand so I want the color to be the brand color And let's design this services card. So I'm going to select the card. I'm going to select the card. Okay. I'm going to give a transition 0 0.4 second ease. All right. I'm going to give a border radius. Border radius is going to be border radius LG and I'm gonna give a background color. It's going to be BG2. Oh, let's see. Yep. And I'm gonna select card padding. I'm gonna give a padding from the top and bottom. Let's say 4.4 rim, left and right 3.2 rim. All right. I'm gonna select the icon class. I'm gonna give a width and height 6.4 rim height 6.4 rim font size let's say 3.2 rim and I'm gonna give a border radius border radius and uh, I'm gonna give a background color it's going to be the brand color and let's say I'm gonna set the display to grid and i want the icon to be in the center horizontally and vertically so as you can see the color is going to be okay so the color is going to be the brand color color is going to be the bg color bg2 all right and i want the icon to be in the center so text align center there you go and uh, I'm gonna give a margin bottom. So I'm gonna select. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm gonna give a margin bottom. Say two point four rim. I think two point four rim is a little bit too much, so I'm gonna one point eight rim. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate this card. All right. So we have this grid class. So I'm gonna type grid. I'm gonna select the grid class. Set uh, the display to grid. All right, and I'm gonna give a gap. Let's say two point four rim. Okay, so the space between is 2.4 rim. Then I'm going to select a uh, three column grid. I'm going to type grid template column. So I want to show three items. So I'm going to type one, four, three times. All right, looking great. 
and also when I hover on this uh, service card so we have this effect like when I hover so as you can see and uh, let's see so I'm gonna add another class to this so I'm gonna select the service ID services ID all right so services then i'm going to select uh the card and i'm going to select the paragraph so we have this default margin so so i'm going to remove that margin so i'm going to type margin bottom to zero all right so as you can see we don't have that margin so let's add that uh, effect i'm going to select the card on hover I'm gonna give a box shadow x and y axis is zero blur is zero and the spread is going to be four pixel going to be 0 0.4 and the color is going to be brand color save it and i'm gonna push to from the y axis negative 0 0.5 frame which is 0 0.5 which is five pixel so as you can see awesome so let me give it a uh, 0.3 looking great and you can change the icon so whatever you want to put there so let me select this feather icon here and you can change the icon like this I'm going to select just some random icon. So let me put let me put this one, and I'm going to paste it right here. Save it, and let's see. Okay, so we have these services. So let's see the responsiveness. So as you can see, it is showing like this, which is looking very ugly. So I'm going to select this three column grid so I'm going to type media and I'm going to give a maximum width so 7, 6, 8 pixel okay then I'm going to select three column grid at this break point so I want to show two items so I'm going to select grid template column 1 FR and 1 FR so as you can see we have displaying two items so i'm going to copy this and uh, paste it so i'm going to type five six five seven six pixel at this breakpoint and below i want to show only one item save it so as you can see we are displaying two items but when the screen size is getting smaller so we are showing only one item and also we have this uh, problem so it is uh, touching the another restriction the intro so for that i'm gonna select section the full height i'm gonna give a padding from the top and bottom let's say air trim which is 80 pixel and left and right zero let me resize so as you can see we have some space now which is looking good okay so that's it for the services so let's move to this portfolio section so what i'm gonna do i'm going to duplicate this section Here, I'm gonna paste it. I'm gonna uh, remove this, change the comment. So it's going to be portfolio. All right, and the ID is going to be portfolio as well. And I'm gonna I'm gonna copy the text from this finished project. So this is going to be latest. 
So I'm gonna paste it right here. And this is going to be my portfolio copied and here I'm gonna paste it. And here I'm gonna create a div. I'm gonna give a class grid and I'm gonna add another class. It's going to be two column grid. Okay, I'm gonna put a card and uh, here I'm gonna put an image. This is going to be source image and project one. All right. And then I'm gonna put another class. It's going to be card padding. And I'm gonna copy the text. I'm gonna type H4 and I'm gonna give a heading, say heading two, and I'm gonna paste that text. Save it and I'm gonna copy this lorem text as well okay and i'm gonna put anchor text so it's going to be read more save it and let's see okay so i'm gonna go back to the card okay so i'm gonna select card and then i'm gonna select the image so as you can see we have this border radius but at the top we don't have the border radius for the image there so i have selected the image so i'm going to give border top left radius sorry right radius is going to be variable border radius lg border top left radius okay and i'm going to give a border radius lg save it so as you can see we have this uh, border radius looking great so i want to show two items on this top so for that i'm gonna select i'm gonna select this three column grid i'm gonna rename this to two column grid i'm gonna remove this so i want to show two items so as you can see and i think the text is looking very huge so i'm gonna put heading three yep heading three is looking fine and uh, Yep, so I'm gonna duplicate this card. And I'm gonna change the image. So this is going to be four, three, and two. Save it. So let's see. All right. Looking great. And let's see the response on this. So, which is looking fine at this breakpoint, but when I resize, so it is looking not good. So I'm going to copy this to column grid. Okay, so at this brick point, I want to show only one item. So I'm going to remove this. So as you can see, we are displaying only one item. Looking cool. Okay, so let's move to the next section, which is going to be this testimonial section. So I'm going to copy this and here i'm gonna paste it so the id is going to be reviews i think so let's go to the sidebar and see yep previews and uh, so what i'm gonna do i'm going to copy the text so i have copied and uh, here i'm gonna paste it i'm gonna copy this text So I'm going to search for uh, icon quote, quote left. So I'm going to copy this and uh, I'm going to remove this card. So let me remove this and I'm going to remove the icon and I'm going to paste it and I'm going to give a class text brand. So let's see. so the id is going to be reviews okay so 
let me increase the size for that quote icon so I'm going to select this quote icon which I think is uh, 3x say 4x alright so you can increase the font size for this let's say 5x I think 4x is looking fine so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna copy this text and uh, here I'm gonna put a paragraph I'm gonna paste the text and I'm gonna remove this paragraph okay so I'm gonna put this person name it's going to be John Doe and I'm gonna put us uh, I'm gonna put a paragraph so I'm gonna put a div and here I'm gonna copy the text and I'm gonna paste and the color for this is going to be text brand well, let's see awesome okay so I'm gonna duplicate this save it here we go and let's see responsiveness looking cool all right so let's move to the next section which is going to be this blog section so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna copy this portfolio section here i'm gonna paste it and i'm gonna rename this to the blog and i'm gonna change the text I'm gonna copy this and let's paste that right here save it and I'm gonna change this to three column grid so I want to show three items so just like this and I'm gonna change the image so I'm gonna remove one card it's going to be it's going to be blog blog 2 and blog 3 all right and you can change the title if you want to so i'm gonna leave that as it is to save some time and then we have this contact us section so let's design this So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna paste it. I'm gonna remove this grid and let's change the ID to contact. And I'm gonna copy this text. Here I'm gonna paste it. And the text is going to be let's talk now save it and let's see okay so let's create that form so i'm gonna create a form and the action is going to be nothing and here i'm gonna add a class this is going to be form so here i'm gonna create an input type is going to be text and a class is going to be form control placeholder is going to be enter name so i'm gonna copy this i'm gonna paste it and let's see name email subject and message so this is going type is going to be email and this is going to be required okay so i'm gonna copy this so these input fields are must so the user should user must fill out these fields so that's why this required i have put that attribute so i'm gonna copy this and then i'm gonna go into so the first one is name email and subject so this is going to be type is going to be text
and uh, it's going to be enter subject and the last one input field is going to be text area I'm going to remove this name and ID as well as column I'm going to give a class form form control and this is required as well the rows is going to be 6 and let's add a placeholder as well it's going to be enter message and I'm going to put a button type is going to be submit and I'm going to have a class btn and the text is going to be send message save it and let's see all right so let's design this so i'm going to select this form class right i'm going to scroll down okay i'm going to set this to grid okay and the gap between these items is going to be 1.2 rem Okay, I'm going to select on uh, form control class. I'm going to give a background color, it's going to be BG2, and I'm going to give a border radius, border radius, and border is going to be one pixel solid BG2. All right, and so i don't know why this is not working so let me give a padding as well 1.6 rim form control class all right Okay, so I'm gonna remove this outline order so form control on focus I think it is focus I'm gonna remove the outline to none all right and um, I'm gonna change the color to the body color all right and i'm going to increase the font size to 1.6 rem and font family is going to be font base all right and uh, so as you can see this color is gray color so i want this to be the body color as well so what you can do uh, so i'm going to select the form control I'm gonna select the placeholder so color is going to be body color as well so as you can see and on focus I'm gonna give I'm gonna I'm gonna change so let me give a padding 1.4 all right and on focus I'm gonna change the border color to the brand color save it so as you can see okay so let me remove the text and if we user submit want to submit so it says fill out this field as you can see that's why i have put the required okay so let's go to the button and set the font size to 1.6 rem and font family it's going to be font base save it so as you can see and cursor is going to be pointer awesome so now let's design this simple footer
Okay, so here I'm gonna type footer. Here I'm gonna create a container. I'm gonna put a paragraph text so you can type, you can place any text you want. So I'm gonna simple type design by. All right, so then I'm gonna copy the social icons. Let me copy the social links. And here I'm gonna paste it. Okay, so let's design this. I'm gonna select. I'm gonna select the footer. Okay. Mm, and I'm gonna give a padding. So padding top is going to be four rim, left and right zero. Alright, so I want this to be so so i want the um uh, so i'm going to select the container and why i want to show this on side by side okay so i want to set the display to flex all right and justify content space between so it is now on side by side and let me reduce it like this so if there is not available space so if i decrease the browser window let me show you like this okay so as you can see there is not available space for this text so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna say flex wrap to wrap so i'm gonna set the flex wrap to wrap so as you can see it moved to the next line just looking great all right so let's see okay so let's add the animation so for that i'm gonna visit to this website which is animate on scroll and you can click on this icon and it will bring you to this page okay so how you can initialize this uh you can simply call this function okay and it will going to initialize so let me copy this and i'm gonna go to the app.js and here i'm gonna paste it okay so to use these animations so i'm gonna simply copy this all right and i'm gonna go to the home section and i'm gonna paste it right here save it and let's see i'm gonna refresh the page so as you can see we have this animation and which is happening a little bit fast so as you can see let me go to this finish project i'm gonna save it so as you can see this is a little bit slow and i think it is looking fine so i'm gonna overwrite some of its default properties so let's reduce the speed so i'm gonna copy this duration i'm gonna paste it so by default it is 400 so i'm gonna set this to 900 okay so let's refresh so as you can see which is looking fine now and also I'm gonna add this to the paragraph which is right here and I'm gonna add a delay to this paragraph okay so I'm gonna add a delay 100 millisecond awesome and I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna add this to the CTA and the delay is going to be 200 looking great so let's add that to this section as well so i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna visit to the services here i'm gonna paste it and i'm gonna remove the delay for this and and here i'm gonna add the delay to the paragraph save it and let's see looking cool and also i'm going to add this to this uh, services 
So I'm gonna copy this and here I'm gonna paste it. So let's see. So I'm gonna save it and refresh. So when you add this animation to this card, so as you can see, we have this effect. But when you add this animate on scroll effect um, animation, so that will override this. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna wrap this inside a div. And I'm gonna add the animation to this div and I'm gonna put this card inside this div. All right. So I'm gonna copy this div, paste it and paste it. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it right here. Copy it and I'm gonna paste it inside here. So as you can see, it is looking good. And let me increase the delay for this one 200 and this is going to be 300. Awesome. So I'm gonna do this for this uh, rest of the others and I will be so I will do this uh, real quick to this rest of the other items. Okay, so I have added the animation to all these cards. So let's see, it is looking cool. All right, so let's see the responsiveness. So I'm gonna, so as you can see, which is looking great. All right, guys, so that's it for this video and uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.